Welcome everyone, Stephen here. Today in this Play Like episode, I'll be exploring a game from my own point of view. And the strategy, it's based around using Mechanized Support Center to get some upgraded Shermans with Airborne Battle Group. The Pathfinders are used to support a US T1, T2 army through flares and smoke until the Shermans can do the heavy lifting. And this game, it's a really good demonstration of how you can use smoke offensively, defensively, or simply to stall my opponent for this game is Alpern, so let's jump into it. So from the get-go with this strategy, what you want to do is pick up Airborne Battle Group, select Pathfinders, reinforce the first member of the squad, construct your barracks. With this army composition that I go for in this game, um, it is based around using Pathfinders with Riflemen, Weapon Support Center, where I'll get a MG and Bazooka Squad, and then from there, just placing them in the right place at the right time. My game. opponent this game, Alpern, has gone for Coastal Reserves, and he's starting to wire up and sandbag his side of the map quite effectively, which is what you want to do with Coastal Reserves. Uh, they build so fast, um, and it's going to pay dividends into the future engagements for him by building this sandbags and wire. I actually identified that he was doing this just from the sheer amount of wire and sandbags that he was placing. I was listening in the fog of war and searching for green cover that was being constructed, which I might show on the screen at the moment as well, just a picture in picture from my stream. Uh, it's a little strategy that you can do in order to figure out where the coastals are and you can start to spread your units accordingly so i knew that coastal squad was there because i detected that sandbag so i started to move my pathfinder and rifleman down to the center to help figure out where he was moving and apply some pressure and contain him on his side of the map we're up boys what are you oh, maybe he hasn't I'll gone coastal because there's not that many sandbags Oh no, there is. I'm happily just capping it up the map, but still just trying to suss out where he is. So I know so far I haven't seen him capping, so I start to move my Pathfinder forward here. And I know he's sitting there, so I immediately back out. You don't want to engage Coastal's head on. So I'm happy just to move across, figure out where is his next squad. I know there's one definitely here. He's still sitting there, so he's definitely defending that cutoff. North Taranto is quite threatening if you lose this cutoff, which we will see in this game, but he knows he has to defend it. So I'm just searching for his other squads. The reason why I shoot this flare here is I really want to figure out if there's an MG lurking around here. That's the only squad in that area, so I know he's committed quite heavily to the top. And I've detected there is a Pioneer here, as well as a Coastal Reserve in the north. So I'm already counting his squads. I know he's, all right, he's got two Coastals. I've got two rifles out. So he shouldn't have an MG out yet because I'm queuing up my third rifle. But I'm still not sure. I'm still just searching just to play it safe. The last thing you want to do on this map is get an early suppression. So I confirm the Pioneers are there. I'm getting off some free damage, which is nice. And this was great to see because I saw the two Pioneers were in the north. So I knew he did not have an MG. If he's got two Coastals and three Pioneers, there is no way he has an MG on the field unless it's going to be coming in the next minute. So I start to apply a bit more pressure here. I'm starting to really just cycle through the south and the north, just snipping away at him i don't want to commit to an engagement until i'm confident that i know i will win that engagement and the timing push is coming here with the three rifles in the field and in pushing up into this position the moment i'm going to pause it here for a moment the moment i saw him move from here to here i knew his cut off was exposed so i'm already strategically thinking i want to push here I'm already got that in my mind because I know there's not going to be an MG on the field in, or if there is, it's going to be visible coming out of the base with this Pioneer. So I want to be aggressive. And as you can see here, I did research this with my first 25 munitions, the smoke package. I am going to perform an offensive maneuver from this position. So let's see how it plays out. I'm going to smoke the coastals, which allows me to effectively move up without taking any casualties. 
So I put on the pressure and I'll put a picture in picture of this scenario. If I didn't have that smoke there, I would have lost a few models, but it allows me to just quickly push up here now and fight at the cutoff, putting it into my advantage with no manpower losses. So this is a, a really nice engagement. I leave the pathfinders here just in case that an MG does come out so that I can use the rifle grenade, but he never built an MG. And I think Alpern was debating it at this point, but decided to not go for an MG, but rather get out a Jaeger squad, which you can see he's building here. But it was the risk that he took and exposed his cutoff. So here I'm able to just apply pressure and force a quite a large retreat. Two squads retreated off the, or two coastals retreated off the field. I do follow this up with an MG now, and this MG wants to be aggressive and come up the map. Now, the moment I see Jaegers, I know, all right, he has Jaegers on the field. I know he's got a tier two tech structure. The next likely unit is most likely going to be either a Skalka or a Flak. Generally, it's the Skalka. The Skalka provides a lot more pushing power. So here, I just want to stall here. I know I've got my MG running up the map. You can see it's making its way to the cutoff. I just want to stall as long as I can, and hopefully the MG can get there in time to put down some the suppression. So the MG is setting up. It's going to get some suppression off on the Jaegers, but to Alpern's credit here, he uses smoke just as effectively as I did. He's negated one of the units, which is what you want to do. So Alpern's using the smoke defensively here. I'm using it more offensively, but there'll start to be a bit of a transition in this game where I'll start using it in a combination. I'll start using smoke offensively, defensively, and also just to generally stall out positions to swing Roger in that. my favor. So I saw those bushes crash and he's pushing towards my MG, but I've expected this and preactively built the bazookas in order to counter the 2-2-1 two, two, push. While still just capping up the northern side of the map. There was just pioneers in the northern side of the map. So I could quite effectively just gain that top position. Now gaining this top position on this map is super useful. That's 15 fuel in my hands. Which is going to let me get my Sherman out a lot quicker than I usually would. This strategy does work quite effectively on high fuel maps. Uh, the main reason being it just... Gets you your Shermans out earlier. Sometimes you might have to go motor pool. But upgun Shermans is the way to go. Because I am going mechanized support center. And I'm only taking mechanized support center now, you can see. So that's seven minutes into the game. It's considered probably generally late compared to uh, most US players will start their teching at about five minutes. But now it's just a game of putting on the pressure. I'm starting to just get my units back around the cutoff. I can see that he is there. I don't want to hyperextend with this squad because the 221 can run it down on retreat. So I know I've got to get it back home. And I put this bazooka in the retreat path just in case it is coming down that way. Now I smoked here. This was an example of smoking to stall. Uh, I think this confused Alpern a little bit because... and. This is advantageous to do this. I might even pause it here. Because attack. I knew at this point in time, he had a lot of units on the field. And I'll take off the Fog of War to show this. I'll give it a quick play. But you can see he had a lot of units on the field. This means he is going to be capping the map. I don't have that many units on the field. These units are retreating. And I'm closer to his base, so he has the defender's advantage. So this smoke buys me time. It allows the other units to come up into more threatening positions. And then it also allows me to shoot a flare to figure out exactly where the other squads are. And I'm happy to sit there until that smoke subsides. So my 160 manpower unit is causing his 240, I think they are. 260 to become stuck in place to hold the cutoff. So stall with smoke. It's good to do. So the 221 is bouncing from left to right, just applying pressure, which is what you want to do with it. I'm happy to stall in that green cover. Good dodge with the rifle grenade there by Alpern. 
Um, but the Pathfinders have done their job. They can run on back home. Bazookas are countering the 2-2-1's pathway, but I advanced here. Probably shouldn't have done that because the Jaegers were quite effectively focusing down the Bazookas, and now the 2-2-1 has free reign on the map, so I have to be careful here. The MG is going to be able to hold them in place, but only for so long before that 2-2-1 starts to cause some significant attrition. So I haven't upgraded this yet. I probably should have upgraded this sooner rather than later, but I do in due course time. So the chase on the 221 is on, but they effectively stalled, which allows these rifles to hold into the next green cover position. They'll all heal up, and I can just maintain the VP point advantage. You can tell from the amount of pressure that I've been putting on through stalling and the offensive smokes that I've created a sizable VP point advantage. 250 points almost, which is enough to start placing pressure on the Vermark player to have to do something. They have to make some more risky decisions. Do they push up the map? Do they hold? Um, it starts to question how aggressive they have to be, which is a good thing. More risks means more mistakes are likely. So here, this rifleman, I do keep it here. There's no need for it to push up further. It's okay to sit in the green cover and just decap that because everything is back in my base. If I pushed up further, I knew that 221 would hunt me down. So I just stall here a little bit and wait till everything comes back onto the map. Enemy forces are converging on a fuel point. I think at this point, um, Alpern starts to get a bit of a military advantage. He's been creating a lot more units than myself. I'm starting to float a bit of manpower because I'm starting to want to get up the tank depot, which I start building now. Um, and that option of teching does mean I have less units on the field. So I'm starting to be a bit cautious now. You're always a bit vulnerable in this game when you start to tech. So I'm quite happy just to sit for my defensive line and hold a bit of ground until I see a favorable engagement. That favorable engagement will really come from my scouts being in an effective position to provide vision on the map. So here, I know this is not a favorable engagement. I stall a little bit. But back them out. I don't want to lose manpower unnecessarily. I'd rather have them go back home. And similarly, these Pathfinders can only buy so much time before they start to need to retreat. Which brings a bit of tension up to here. This building does still shoot down here. So you can always use that to your advantage. And Elpen makes a good decision to run home and heal up. I know the 221's here, no point engaging in it. 221's counter scouts and pathfinders pretty well. May as well just send them home, heal up. And a bit of a lull occurs in the fighting. I think there was a smoke here placed by the Jaegers because I kept on pushing these rifles back and forth just to give vision for my MG to threaten the cutoff. And now I want to apply a bit of pressure again. So I'm just getting that vision and send it back home. And now I'm starting to push aggressively in the south. I want this fuel back into my control. I want to make sure I get the fuel to be able to get that tank out. And especially because I know I don't have the military advantage anymore. Um, I don't want to extend, overextend to the north. But you can see the Sherman is on the way, and I've also queued up armor skirts from Mechanized Support Center. This is a very important upgrade. It provides the Sherman with 20% extra armor. So it's going to go from 195 on the frontal armor to, I think, 230-something. We'll see it increase, so 234. So that's a respectable decrease in. Uh, the frequency in which the Panzer Shrek can penetrate. And not only that, the Panzer Shrek will now only do 120 damage to my tank, as opposed to doing its usual 160 damage. So it's highly advantageous to get that upgrade as soon as you can. Obviously get the Sherman out first, and then upgrade it as soon as you can after that. 
So this Sherman's now got free reign on the battlefield for a bit. I'm going to just reverse back, push these guys off. Also, I think I run over this cover if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I run over the cover because that's going to just make it easier for me to protect this VP later on and harder for Alpen. And it's just doing the rounds now, just forcing everything back and allowing the US infantry to get the job done. So this strategy is centered around getting normal Shermans and supporting them with riflemen and pathfinders to be in a good position. The verbal vin comes out. And the reason why I like going for the regular Shermans is the verbal vins are a bit easier to counter using the regular Sherman compared to the dozer because the dozer can miss opponent's armor and the Shermans do a really nice job against martyrs as well provided you're using smoke which is what we're going to see this game. So here I do a bombing run to make sure he does not cap his cut off back and it forces a big general retreat. Whilst it's expensive to do that, in my eyes, it's worth it. I managed to buy enough time to get the MG to get to the cutoff. And now, it's mainly about just getting out another Sherman. And I've got the perfect armor composition that I've been aiming for. This Marta comes out earlier than I expected, though. So it is going to force a retreat. I didn't see that coming as well. I might even just put on Fog of War. So you can see he's using it at max range and sniping me down quite effectively here. And it's going to cause that German to run back home. Now he does a really good offensive Enemy maneuver. I didn't realize the Jaegers were also pushing up through that corridor. So he got off a little bit of extra damage onto my bazooka squad here and does secure the kill. So these guys all got to get back home because they will get bursted down quickly. The Sherman can sneak in for one more quick shot, but I don't want to overextend in case that Amada comes along, which you can hear it coming along. It can. And time to back on up. I did lose the bazooka, but I do pick these up later with a scout squad and I think the engineer as well. So bars are followed up with the upgrade. Um, it's a nice transition there just to help push the Jaegers off the map. And you can see now I'm shooting flares again. I need to know where my opponent is. From this information, I'm able to gauge, all right, he's repairing, He's that's out of the fight. I can be a bit more aggressive here with my rifles, which is great. I can use them a bit safely, and if necessary, pull them back as that advances. So I don't want to lose my power. Just running back home, keeping him safe. And here, this is a good example of an offensive smoke to defend a VP. So I've... I've smoked in front of the VP whilst my MG sets up in the rear. That allows him, me, to have the element of surprise and it delays him. Alpern was hesitant here to push right into the VP. He took a sideways turn, it wastes more time, um, and ultimately just allows me to hold the center of the map a little bit longer whilst he also takes a few casualties in the process. But with my Sherman being repaired back at base, and I brought my engineers up to make sure I did grab this before I finished the repairs. Once I can get the Sherman back into action, I know I'll be a bit safer. I do also, I think at this point in time, have... Oh no, I have an upgrade smoke. I do eventually get this though. I think I might get it after the second Sherman. But at this point in time, Alpern does have the military advantage on me. Uh, he's... Got the Enemy army that is bigger. Uh, he's got 66 pop. I've got 53. But I've got the upgrade advantage so, and the VP advantage. So I'm not stressed here. I'm happy just to slowly play it out. Hold on to at least one VP, which is I'm going for then in the north. And just apply some light pressure here. These engagements, if I can't easily get these, I'm happy just to retreat. There's no need for me to lose models unnecessarily. So you can see I'm playing like that. I'm just holding the green cover, retreating off. I would have been great to uncap that, but that's okay. And I got a nice suppression there. I think he might have been trying to cloak on that cover point, but there's not enough cover to cloak all the units in that space. Some of them were out of cover. Because he had the Jaegers on hold fire. 
and we can see I forced, I think, three retreat, four retreats in that engagement. So I know, all right, I've pushed him back. I've got a position on the map. He's mined down, which I wasn't aware of, but I think I blew up a couple of these, fortunately, with some stray shots. <laughs> but this is a good thing to do, just wiring off the opponent's green sandbags. And I knew he was starting to form a line. Um, I might even pause it here. Switch it back to my point of view. So my scouts here are in really nice positions. One is here to give me vision of the center and I've sh and the other one is in the south, but can quickly return to the mid if necessary to provide vision here for the MG. So it's about this map, especially is about maintaining vision here and here because it allows you to really determine if your opponent is really defending their cutoff. And if they're not defending the cutoff, you can push. Otherwise, they're more likely to be in the north. So we'll watch on tack map a bit. I know he's starting to push in here, so my priority becomes shifted to here. I can hold this green cover a little bit. But for only so long, the Shermans are needed. So I have upgraded the Sherman smoke. I popped the smoke in this region to defend my um, Sherman as it approaches. Because I thought the martyr might be there, but I it was in this position here. Which I took a quite a fair bit of damage there. Whilst it wasn't successful, the intentions were good. And I carry through with these intentions later into the game. And it pays off in a lot more, a lot more better so he's, Alpern's recognized he had the advantage in that engagement. So he's applying pressure as you should. And I recognize I needed to hold onto the center. So I call in a bombing run here just to buy me time and make sure that he cannot cap the middle. With that, I do start to apply a bit of pressure into the center knowing the Marta is in that location. But I know I can't get too close. It is coming and I can could hear it. So I start to move my Sherman up safely to the north where he can just push back these coastal they reserves. Now, what's really going through my head now is I've got the army composition that I want. I've got my two Shermans, my three rifles, my scouts, an MG. It's more... The decision here, it was, what am I going to get next? Because I knew I could only afford the one unit. I had two options here. I could either go for a, a, a mortar to provide me with some additional off-map strikes and smokes, or an anti-tank gun. I think I did queue up the mortar, but then change my mind, recognizing that the two martyr line is a issue. I can't effectively push two martyrs with two Shrek Jaegers in support. So it's a better choice to get the anti-tank gun to help push them back slowly, slowly and leapfrog my way up the map. But the Sherman's here can be aggressive and push, especially with the martyr being recognized out of position. So I put the pressure on here. I managed to get this martyr kill for next to nothing. Just a little bit of damage, which was a really nice pickup as well as that Jaeger. Um, I think what Alpern had to do there was just concentrate all of his forces in the center of the map, but he spread them out um, and that came to his detriment. I found a hole and pushed it hard with both my units, both my tank units quite heavily. But you can see these Shrek rounds are sometimes bouncing with the upgraded armor and they do take the reduced damage of a by 40 damage reduction. So those two did penetrate. But the bars are there in support. So I think this Sherman, I do send it back to the base to make use of the mechanized support center repair engineers whilst the other engineer is busy repairing this squad now this tank isn't fully healed but i know i don't have time to fully heal it i need to push it up and help support this rifle squad the Marta is in a good position there though to shut it down that was well played 
So it's going to force another early retreat to, for repairs. And at this point, the game's pretty even. Um, we've got a similar army size, similar um, combined arms approach. And it's starting to get to the point where we can both make decisive plays. So at this point, I'm just shooting a flare off into the center to get vision. I don't know what triggered that mine. I think it was the flare, and I wasn't aware that that's a bug that exists in the game. Hopefully Relic can fix that soon. Uh, but flares can trigger mines if they're activated directly on top of them by the looks of it. Um, but that knowledge of the flare was helpful. It let me know that the two verbals were in the center. And the fact that he'd made another verbal rather than replacing the martyr... I knew that I could be a bit aggressive here with this Sherman. So I smoked to allow my um, scouts to cap this point to deny the triple VP point drain. I then smoked the center here to shut off the martyr because I didn't know it was still sitting more north, but it was just a preemptive one. I shoot another flare here to provide myself vision. So I know, all right, when with this flare being shot, it confirmed that the martyr is not in this position. So... I was like, all right, let's push. And I drop in the anti-tank gun in support as well, because I know the martyr will eventually come because the Sherman has revealed itself. So the martyr's been revealed. I know where it is. I'm just going to pull my Shermans back, keep my units safe. But at the same time, I'm recognizing that he is going for a sizable push in the center. So the Shermans can swing around. I think I shoot off another layer of smokes down here. This is, I'm still using that same technique, shutting off that crossroads pathway. But the Jaeger push is coming. So the Shermans have to get here to support the MG. And they get off a lot of damage by doing this. Anti-tank gun in support if the martyrs do push up. And there's a nice bounce. In the north, we've got some Jaegers pushing in. So I know I can just have to stall there. And I'm just waiting for my infantry to move up. I do pop a recon run here just to give myself some vision. Because I'm desperate for it to figure out what's where. And I know that there isn't much there. So I do bring up my anti-tank gun a little bit more. But with my infantry back in support. I get off some nice shots. And I can start to be aggressive here. Especially once the pathfinders get up onto the field. Once I get my pathfinder near my anti-tank gun. I'm always thinking. Alright. This is guiding the way. What can I shoot at? And here, it worked out great. I saw the martyr. I got off one shot with the armor piercing rounds. And then I followed through with the bazooka rounds. And the Shermans dive in, knowing that they've the Pathfinder and the anti-tank gun get some nice damage. And I can get a really nice quick kill from that. Pathfinders and anti-tank guns are a nice, nice synergy units. They complement each other really nicely. So with that martyr kill being secured, I'm thinking, this is really good now. I've got two Shermans. I only have to worry about the three Shreks on the field. And I can defend these VPs in the middle and the north. And slowly, slowly, his VPs are going to tick and apply some more pressure on him. So I probably should have shot that smoke out first before I led or had my pathfinders leading the way, but that's okay. Mistakes were made. And now I knew we had both done a sizable retreat and he'd be pushing up soon. So Alpern is moving back onto the map. Oh. 
reveal all actually no we'll just reveal here so i've shot the flare up to confirm and this flare gave away a lot of information this was a fantastic flare i think it probably put alpen on the spot as well he was like all right he knows i'm here i have to either push or move back we must take it back and he opts to push in a little bit And I'm just waiting for him to push further again. So what I do here, I do that defensive smoke again on the VP. In order to, if he does want to push in, he has to push in blind. But what he does here very well, he actually starts building in the smoke. He starts constructing in the smoke a bunker to effectively surprise me. The moment I saw it, I panicked. Because um, Coastal Reserves has access to this designated artillery overwatch and can decimate everything that I've got here. So I start focusing it straight away. He does call in that ability, and I knew I had to shoot this down ASAP. Um, and fortunately, once you kill the bunker, the ability becomes inactive. So I was able to just be like on the defensive mindset now. I shoot some more smokes, continue to backpedal just to block the martyr's line of fire. And then I shoot off a another smoke into the center with my shermans that allows that martyr to be blocked and it gives me the confidence to dive this sherman into the central part of the map cutting that jaeger squad in half and get all the circle strafe on the martyr whilst the dozer can deal with these jaeger shreks down the center from here it's a decision to push the anti-tank gun up in order to when that smoke subsides to kill the martyr which it successfully does and it allows the Germans to safely back out off the map now, knowing that I've won the a sizable engagement there. I've killed the martyr, forced a lot of manpower drain on the Jaegers to occur. And simply put, I just have to back up and repair. Because during that time as well, I was fighting with just a part of my army. With the rest being up the north, three squads in the north capping. So winning a, a full... I've managed to beat the Wehrmacht army at its fullest with about two thirds of my army due to smoke. And that allowed me to split his army where they weren't all firing, allowing the rest of the army to stop retreat where necessary. So these two Shermans were very hurt and had to just pull back out of the engagement whilst the other one drove through the center. And at that point, Elpern does call it GG and resigns. We've done it! The enemy has been defeated! Nice! I predicted that would be an effective way to do that build order. And after all the testing, I was like, no, this is the way to do it. I'm going to commit to it. And it worked. I'm stoked. <laughs> Woo! So yeah, if I want to play Mechanized Support Center, I think that's the best way to do it. By playing Mechanized Support Center in that style, what it allows you to do is maintain a lot of pressure because I'm committing to Rifleman, I'm committing to an MG, the Pathfinders, and I'm just smacking down the pressure. It probably helped a little bit on that map because it was North Taranto, but even so, I think I still played all right because at the same time, he had mobility. I didn't. I had to be cautious in how I kept the map because he had the 2-2-1 two, and two, could easily cut me down if I tried to push a bit more further north. Allowing, by going mechanized support center with airborne, if I really need to, I can drop the anti-tank gun, but then I just work my way to standard Shermans. Standard Shermans, and then mix in a dozer if necessary. The smoke and armor upgrades are critical though. But that is it, this game. Um, it is focused upon using a strategy where Mechanized Support Center is used in combination with Airborne Battle Group. It's making use of Pathfinders to provide vision, to support the infantry, to allow you to make good decisions. And then it's getting out a heavy tier one with a tier two, waiting for Mechanized Support Center to upgrade and then pushing through with Shermans to do the heavy work from. 
Hopefully you enjoy the game, and I'll see you next time.